All right, let's move straight on to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. I was honestly thinking I was going to get a bunch of these done tonight, but I only got two done. Oh, well. Um, now, this one is just insane. I saw this when I was a young kid, and it was after I was a huge fan of the first one, and I was like, oh, my God, I can't wait to see the second one. And I threw it in, and my brain pretty much exploded with how insane this film was. I just wasn't ready for it at the age that I saw it. I thought it was awful. I was just like, what is this? This is just so stupid and crazy and not, it didn't feel like the first film. It, it, you know, as I said, I was just too young. Now that I've grown up more, I've come to appreciate like films this crazy and, and just kind of throwing it all out and, and just going for broke. And I, I now appreciate and respect how, you know, completely bonkers this film is. It is such a bizarre sequel. <laughs> they waited like for a decade to throw this on the scene. I can't even imagine the response to this in theaters. It must have just been a bunch of people looking around like, oh my God, I'm, like, am I losing my mind? This is, I feel like I'm in a fucking insane asylum right now. It is such a wild film. This is what happens when you give a lunatic a ton of money. <laughs> to make a movie. I can't believe the studios actually had any hand in this because they wanted to do a completely different film and the studio forced them to write this. This? Really? This is the kind of film that studios are like, oh, hell no. And this is what they had. I can't even imagine what the other film was like. The one with the cannibal town that they were in whatever so we get this uh, opening crawl narration thing going on here like in the first one and i really like it i really like what's written uh it it, it works it's it's cool we also get to find out that sally um you know became catatonic after the events of the first one which makes total sense that probably is what would happen and it always begs the question like do you even want to bother like surviving something like this like because she's just gone mentally there's nothing left she's just gonna be a vegetable for the rest of her life she won't even be able to freaking function and live a life so she's like basically dead she'd never like she basically died in that movie like even though her physical body got away mentally she's dead and we get to find out that's true here i'm sure that's just a way to explain away you know her character and they could have brought back um, Marilyn Burns, if she was interested, I'm wondering if they even like, uh, you know, kicked that around as an idea. I'm sure they did, uh, but I don't know if she just declined or whatever, because uh, it would be pretty cool to see her back. But that character went through it damn enough to the point where she's mentally freaking brain dead, basically. Um, so instead, we have Carolyn Williams as Stretch replacing her. And uh, love Carolyn Williams. She's been in a ton of horror films at this point. And Stretch is... <laughs> I know a character that can probably annoy the shit out of a lot of people. But I dig her. I think she's fun. I think she's cute. I think, you know... I, I dig I dig Stretch. Um, and LG. I kind of like their relationship. They're back and forth. Now, these guys call in to the radio... Uh, station and she keeps telling them that they have to hang up um, and this already shows us that the the jump in the time period because the first one was so isolated and 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 such a product of its time like in the 70s there was no technology to help and in this one we almost start right away with dudes on cell phones and their you know Mercedes or BMWs or whatever and you're like this is such a different time period this is taking place in. This is, um, and so they call in and they're talking to her and this whole like, sh they have to hang up their line for them to get off the line. She can't talk to anyone else. They have like no other lines and they have to hang up for them. Is that really a thing? Like in, in LG's back there and he's like pulling every single phone line and she's like pressing every button to try to get rid of them. I mean, it's convenient for the plot because they need to be on the radio with them and recording it and all that later. And why wouldn't they have hung up? It explains that away. But I don't know. Is that a thing? Was that a thing? <laughs> I have no idea. 
Um, and these guys play chicken with just some random person and keep like swerving back and forth in their lanes to cut them off. Wow, what pieces of shit. This is another one. It's like, I don't care if they die. I'm glad they did. And then uh, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is they are you know, driving down, they get on that bridge and then the truck pulls in front of them and then they do the backwards car chase and Leatherface comes on the back and I think it's Oingo Boingo playing and oh man it's so great like Leatherface comes up and the dead body that they're carrying around that Leatherface has strapped to the front of him and then Chop Top's carrying later on in the film around is the hitchhiker from the first one so if anyone's ever wondering about who he is or if they're wondering if Chop Top is the hitchhiker no it's been confirmed that the corpse that they're carrying around is the hitchhiker. And if you look close enough, especially in his Blu-ray, you can actually see the uh, birthmark on his face. Chop Top also has a birthmark. I think it's on the other side of his face. So I thought that was kind of odd and almost misleading because it would make the audience be like, well, why does he have a crushed head and all this? But Chop Top is a character that was off in Vietnam during the events of the first film. So that's why he wasn't around in the Sawyer residence. Um, but yeah, I just love that scene where, you know, Leatherface, Bubba, is on the back of the truck and he's just got his, you know, chainsaw out and they shoot the face and the guy's wearing the hologram freaking eyeball sunglasses and uh, shoots the head and the head comes out of the way and it's Leatherface behind there and then he chops the door. If you ever watch any of my Slasher Sunday uh, videos nowadays. I have a Slasher Sunday intro and in that I actually have two clips from this film. The chainsaw fight between uh, Lefty and Leatherface and the head chop when the two college kids are driving and the guy gets his head sawed off here and it falls and the blood squirts out. I just love that kill. I've always thought it was a really fun one. <clears throat> um, and <laughs> Dennis Hopper. Oh my good god. He cited that this is the worst film that he has ever made. Um, but he also said that about Super Mario Brothers. So who knows? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen every single film he's ever been in. I don't have anything. I like this movie a lot. I really do. It's... <laughs> there's, there's things about it that I'm not huge on. So I can't say I outright love it. But I really, really like it. And I think I really, really like it more and more every time I watch it. Like, I feel like if I watch this a little bit more, I would love it. But there's just some parts that drag because they're so over the top and it's just constantly keeping going that it almost becomes boring in a moment. It's just like, okay, what's next? And what's the next? And what's the next? And so, yeah, it just kind of drains itself because it's so constant in its insanity, which I usually don't feel like I would ever say, but there were moments when I was watching this tonight and I was just like, okay, I get it. Like, <laughs> and there's a lot of repetitive stuff as well. I think that kind of bogs the film down doing like, um, you know, it's either homages or whatever you want to call it, where stretches at the dinner table, at the head of the table, like again, and then grandpa's given the, you know, the mallet or the, uh, sledgehammer to hit her over the head again and you know it's just replaying things recycling things from the previous installment which I'm not a huge fan of when it's the direct sequel like you want to start doing that later on but like right in the next one Jesus I can't you come up with new <laughs> new things we find out that Lefty is Sally and Franklin's uncle and he is coming to avenge their deaths and he he keeps constantly stating that he has no fear left and it's basically like just hell is out for them now like it's completely turned around lefty is there to you know annihilate these guys and when he finally does show up they almost concede pretty quickly like they know they're fucked this guy is there to you know obliterate them to close shop they're done for with him um so i just like this idea of uh we don't get to see that much in these franchises like you know halloween or a friday the 13th or a nightmare on elm street or whatever like, we don't get to see the antagonists be the ones that are hunted 
and and bested by somebody who's just like not having it. Like we almost get that character in Friday the Thirteenth Part Four. Um, that dude that's out in the woods and he's hunting Jason and you think like, all right, this guy's going to stand up to Jason and he's going to give him a run for his money. And Jason whoops that guy's ass first fucking encounter. Um, Tommy Jarvis ends up, you know, besting him, uh, in like <laughs> two, technically three films. If you think that's Jason, but we're not here to talk about Friday the 13th. I'm just saying we don't get to see that very often. And I like that he does end up. Uh, taking out almost the entire family by himself. There was just no stopping this guy. He was out for blood in a major way. Um, we get to finally know that the cook's name in this is Drayton Sawyer. Um, so I like that he's named here. And <coughs> the scene where Hopper goes to buy the chainsaw, or Lefty goes to buy the chainsaws, and he like lays down the money, picks up all his chainsaws, and he just hits the tree, instead of sawing through it, he just like, he's like slapping and the guy's behind him, ah, and he's like freaking out and laughing and clapping. And it's like, is everybody in this city or uh, state a fucking psychopath? Um, and <laughs> there's so many stupid parts about this movie, of course. I can't take what's happening in this too seriously, but it's fun to discuss. So. She catches all this on tape. Lefty talks her and he goes, she goes to him and she's like, here, I got some evidence for you and I'm the only one who believes you. And he's like, nah, fuck off. And it's like, really? Like, isn't that why you put it out there? So someone would come forward with some evidence and, uh, or information and the first person and the only person who shows up, you like, you know, usher away. I, I don't understand that move at all. But then he finally decides like, fuck it, I'll let her play it. And he uses it as bait, right? So they come in, and this is our first introduction to Chop Top, which I'll talk about after I'm talking about this. And they, you know, kill LG, and they take his body, and they run off, and, you know, they think that Stretch is dead. And then Stretch is like, I can't let them go. I can't let them go. So she jumps in her car, um, and for some reason, the keys are in the ignition. I noticed that this time. I was like, why are her keys in the ignition already? She just leaves them in the ignition. Uh, and she drives off. And she follows him and then Lefty comes and follows her finally. But he was close enough to where he could follow her and he used her as bait but went somewhere. Because she's like, where were you? And he's like, I'm sorry, girl, I used you. Okay, so you used her. What did you use her for exactly? They were in her radio station for like 10 minutes hacking up her doors killing her friend, taking off with a corpse. Where were you? I don't understand that part at all. That makes no sense. He's staking out the place, right? He used her. I get that. She's bait. Okay, cool. Where was he? Why did he only then follow when she was following them? Why wasn't he following them? Why was he following her following them? That makes no sense at all. And it actually annoyed the shit out of me in the moment. Like, wow, this is lazy ass writing. Even for a crazy movie that doesn't make a ton of sense, that is some bullshit writing. Um, but anyways, I love the introduction. I mean, the introduction of Chop Top. Chop Top is the best character in this movie for sure. Bill Mosley just crushes it as the insane, lovable, nutcase Chop Top. Um, his performance is hilarious and zany and just what this film needed. It, it really just takes it. His character is so perfectly over the top. Um, and he plays that line so well throughout the film. His, you know, his little Sonny Bono wig and he's just keeps taking the lighter and doing it on the thing. And he's, uh, the coat, uh, coat hook or coat hanger. And he's like, you know, picking at his wounds and eating the freaking little bits of charred flesh off of the end of the things and his laugh and all that stuff. I actually do Bill Mosley's sister-in-law's hair. I thought that was so weird when she was sitting there talking. I was talking to her and she was like, my, you know, my brother-in-law is a horror actor. When I mentioned that I, uh, did this and she was like, uh, you know, he does lower stuff. You probably never heard of him. 
And I was like, oh, try me. And she's like, oh, you know, he played like Chop Top and, and Texas Chainsaw or something. And I was like, excuse me? Like, I don't know who that is. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, wow. I was just blown away. And she was just like, yeah, you know, she showed me a couple pictures with him and, the, and her husband and all that. And I was like, wow, that is so cool. I am such a big Chop Top fan. So... I thought that was cool. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's not like I got to meet him or anything. And I haven't seen her in a while. So she only came to me like maybe two or three times. Uh, I don't I don't know what happened to her. But uh, man, what a bummer. Because I, I was hoping I was going to be able to somehow um, talk to him through her. I was like, man, can you set me up an interview on my channel? How fucking cool would that be? But I didn't want to ask that. I'm, I'm not big on that kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, so... But he's just amazing. And then Leatherface attacks Stretch and there's this like foreplay scene because he's got like this crush on her. And I guess I'm kind of fucked in the head because when he's like rubbing that chainsaw down her leg, down her thigh and do like her crotch. I don't know if it's just, I, I mean, I just like women and I like women's legs and I like that stuff. But it's just like when he's rubbing it down, it's sexy. But then it like cuts to him like licking his lips and it's gross as fuck. <laughs> But uh, then he just starts humping. She's like, how good are you? How good are oh, you? You that good? And he's just like, oh, it's so fucking funny and silly. And as I said, when I was a kid, it was just like, what is this? But now as a, an adult, I'm watching it like this is pretty hilarious. They really, really just ran with it. Um, and does Leatherface ejaculate in that scene like I feel like that's what happened there because he's just like oh 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 and then he gets like and he like dances around with it and I'm like I think he just yeah I think that just happened so I think we actually get to see Leatherface uh come in this movie which is <laughs> adds to insane this is oh Jesus lick my lick my plate you dog dick um dog will hunt there's so many, yeah, there's so many quotable lines. Dog Will Hunt is one I think I say a lot. I randomly just like to say that. I think he also says that in House of a Thousand Corpses, I want to say. I feel like it's an homage line. Because I know it's like the run, rabbit, run, run, rabbit. But I swear, I remember him saying Dog Will Hunt somewhere. Maybe I'm just mixing up the run, rabbit, run thing. That's possible. Does he? Anybody remember? I haven't watched that movie in a long time. I feel like I remember that, though. Could be wrong. Maybe it's in Devil's Rejects. Um, another thing that's returned here is when they club LG over the head, he convulses. Um, just like in the first one. Um, and where else? What do we got here? Um, so we go to the Texas Battleland, which... Is that a real place? Is that I've never been to Texas. I don't know a whole lot about it. Um, was that like a theme park or... or something like that that was closed down and that we got exterior shots and then all of the underground stuff is probably like sets and whatnot but is that is that like a broken down amusement park did they make that up for the film or is that a real thing it's pretty cool but it's nutty they took over an entire amusement park and when they go down into the tunnels there's like christmas lights and and lamps and 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 freaking chandeliers and hundreds of lights and they're streamed for like a mile of this like corridor of tunnels and then down there there's all these elaborate things that looks like you know a, it looks like uh the lost boys hangout and hook or something it's just so elaborate and there's so many trinkets and there's so many uh, you know little projects that are put together like bones and all this shit and i'm like how the fuck are they paying for all this electricity, A. And how is the city not coming down because they're running so much electricity from a place that's supposedly shut down? I'm sure they like own the rights to that place and they can put on as much electricity as they want, but I feel like that would garnish a lot of attention and seeing as how there's bones and bodies and parts and shit everywhere spread out through that whole place. Like they have a like this turret thing that's at the top that she climbs to at the end and there's a dead body in there. And then there's this like pathway that they're driving down and she falls down this conveniently placed hole right in the middle of it. And there's like 
corpse hands that he's like reaching out to her with. There's body parts and shit everywhere. How are these guys not getting caught? They've been evading the police for decades. How? They just have the worst fucking cops on earth in Texas. I doubt that heavily. Um, I love when Leatherface runs off at the end of uh, letting her live and, and lying to Chopped Up and he like turns around and he humps with the thing and he like keeps looking at her and he's just humping. Uh, that was great. Um, <clears throat> and so I like I, something I noticed this time. I don't know if it was the Blu-ray cleanup or whatever, but Dennis Hopper, lefty, he's wearing a gun belt across him. And on the gun belt is extra chains for his chainsaw in case what one breaks, he's going to re-chain up the chainsaw right there in the middle of it. <laughs> I just thought that was so ridiculous. They put on there like bullets. Like he's got to have some extra ammunition for his, for his three chainsaw he's, he brings. It's ridiculous. Um... And then he goes and he kicks a wall and the wall explodes and just intestines and insides of people just come spewing out all over the floor. That's one of those moments where I'm talking about where it's just like, that is so over the top. Like the first film exists in a reality, like a crazy reality, but within reality. This one just is completely outside. It's like, living in a crazy person's brain and what they think the world would be like in their fantasies. Like this insane world where these kinds of things could exist. Kicks a wall, the wall opens up. Like, what is that wall? What is that holding? Is that just a storage area that he happened upon and it just started bleeding the second he walked through? And then him going, like, how the hell do they never hear him? Like, these are huge open tunnels that would echo forever. How big is that place? And they, he's like running through there screaming with chainsaws revving and he's cutting every single thing down, not worried about any of it collapsing and caving in on him while he's doing it. And they never hear him until he finally is down there. They can see certain things falling, but they can't figure it out for some reason, but they can't hear him. Bullshit. There's no fucking way. So that was ridiculous. Um, and just him cutting all that stuff up and it's just, I, I don't know, like just go for them. Like I get it. You want to burn the place down, bring it all down, but you're going to make that shit fall on you and you're going to die. And then they're going to get away. Like go kill them and then blow up their place, like knock it down. So that was just so silly. Um, and <clears throat> I, LG, he, so Leatherface cuts the face off of LG, takes it and he puts it on Stretch and he dances around with Stretch and she's having to wear like her best friend's face on her as she's dancing with this lunatic. And then she goes away and LG wakes up and he's been skinned in numerous places on his body. His face is missing and he's like trying to get her free and he's still like doing everything in his power to try to appeal to this girl because he was so in love with her. And then once he dies, she says, I loved you. I, I'm, I'm gonna guess that's in a friendship way, but I don't know, the way she said it and the way it was said, it wasn't like, like, oh, LG, like, I love you, or you were like a good friend or whatever. Like the way she said it, it seemed like there was something romantic in place there, but he was pursuing her the whole film and she kept like pushing him away like it was a joke. So I don't know. That seemed odd to me. That line was, was weird. Um, and <clears throat> so, oh, let's see. Oh, and then Lefty runs into Franklin's body, which I thought was cool. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, thought it was interesting that they actually brought all their victims with them so they like, what loaded them up into a u-haul and just took them down to this place and 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 just like pushed them down into this area like it just the fact that they brought the corpse of a crippled guy in his wheelchair and they brought him all the way over there and like just put him in some random place and didn't do anything with it. I don't know. It's fine. It's cool to see him. I was just like, oh, okay. So we kind of get to see his remains because all of the killing of Franklin in the first one takes place off screen. 
So you never know where he's getting chopped in this and that. And he actually has like a whole like chainsawed part of his face where the bone is completely, you know, sawn through. So that was cool. I was like, oh, Franklin got it right through here. So at least we know that. <clears throat> and Grandpa is still alive here. Uh, this is Tom Savini's work and he cites it as some of his best. He thinks it rivals like um, the makeup in... Oh shit, some film that I'm not familiar with. I know the movie, but I don't think, I can't remember if I've seen it or not. Doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, he ages him. I still think the best aging makeup I've ever seen is in The Exorcist. Max von Sydow couldn't even get a job after that because everyone thought he was like 60. Um, but this is really good makeup. Honestly, it's freaking awesome. Especially when they get the close-ups of Grandpa on his teeth and he's, uh, uh, and he's acting like a baby and he's like licking the freaking uh well whatever um <clears throat> he's just as crazy looking it, it's a great 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 makeup for sure so he should definitely be proud of this and we also find out he's 137 years old i guess being a cannibal is uh you know is very good for your longevity um and Leatherface gets a chainsaw through the gut. That's a great shot to see the chainsaw still like, you know, revving behind him as it's going. Uh, that was great. So uh, Leatherface, there's no way he could have survived that. And then um, freaking Drayton Sawyer grabs a, a hand grenade and opens it up. He, he gets a freaking chainsaw up the ass, which was fan freaking tastic. And then he starts licking the blood from his own ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. Um, and <clears throat> then, yeah, he throws it out, and I guess they all die? I mean, we have a Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3. I don't I remember that movie almost at all, so I'm curious on if it has, like, any connectivity to this. I doubt it has any at all. But uh, I think that was just supposed to be it, and they all died there. And then, and then Chop Top's yet again another thing that's retained here. He's like chopping up stretches back as she's running up the stairs. She gets to the top of the stairs. She finds the chainsaw. She pulls it off of him. He's running around. He could have killed her 17,000 fucking times through that whole chase scene. He's just nuts. He just likes toying with people. And he's so crazy. He can't even keep his thoughts in check. So he's like running around and then she finally opens it up and chainsaws him and he falls and then we get her this time doing the dance instead of Leatherface, which I thought that would have been cool if Carolyn, or yeah, if Carolyn would have done a better dance, but I wasn't a big fan of her dance. I just, it, I don't know, it didn't feel right. It just felt like, it felt like, like a first take and they just were like, okay, good. And I was like, mm, you could have done that better for sure. And then it ends yet again on like crazy insanity, but this time it plays like this real upbeat music, which just kind of like is a tonal shift immediately. It's almost as jarring as nothing at all. It's just like, you know, being left in that insane place. It's just like, what the fuck? And then just being hit with this, like, oh, like upbeat music, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> so anyways, anybody a big fan of this movie? I know that, there's a lot of people who hate this one. In fact, there's, this franchise isn't really liked all that much, to be completely honest. Like, tons and tons of people hate 2, 3, 4, the remake, the remake's prequel, and Texas Chainsaw 3D. And Leatherface, the, the new one. This franchise is definitely got a lot of haters. I think of, besides of the first one, I want to say the remake has the most love. Um, but outside of those two, honestly, the majority on, on all of those I, is negative. So this is not a very beloved franchise. Uh, but they made eight of them so far. It's crazy how that happens. Much like Amityville, which I was talking about. Where it's just like they just keep making them even though... The majority of them are hated. So anyway, it's time for bed, guys.